wasn't the most fortuitous first day, but this was a long-held dream, climbing Kilimanjaro, the world's tallest freestanding mountain. But on this first morning, the rain had set in. Before even leaving the park gate, we were already sodden. There might be five more days like this. This is our first night stop. It's called Simba Camp, and it's been pouring with rain all day, so we're taking cover under the mess tent, trying to warm up and having our first cup of tea. Overnight, the weather did not improve. There was low mist and constant drizzle, but by late afternoon, the swirling cloud began to lift and disclose sweeping views toward the Taita Hills of Kenya. There are several trails up the mountain and are chosen the Rongai route, less popular because its trailhead is harder to reach. Campsites were still busy though, no surprise given the volume of visitors here. About 35,000 tourists a year come to Kilimanjaro National Park and numbers have trebled in the last 20 years. Most come with one thing in mind, the summit. I think part of the challenge is that there's uncertainty there. We may or may not make it. We don't know whether we're going to be able to cope with the altitude or not. And uh, so there's an element of risk. Um, sometimes there's you know, potential for fatality, so that's another further risk, I suppose. So the, the, the goal is to, is to get to the top, absolutely. As the altitude increased, so the landscape changed. By day three, we were over 4,000 metres above sea level, camping in the shadow of the striking Mawenzi Peak. The terrain varies dramatically on the flanks of Mount Kilimanjaro, from moorland to loose scree to this, my favourite, the porous lava, cinder and ash. A great reminder that we're travelling to the summit of a volcano. Some hikers travel independently, but many more join a group, hiring local guides, porters and other support crew. That, of course, increases the cost. You can budget on about $300 a day for a supported six-day climb, but contributing to the local economy is vital for a sustainable tourism model here. Talking about the benefit, personal like me, usually we end up getting money uh, uh, from the tourists, from the company which are, we are working. Tanzania National Parks attest that working conditions have improved, for example by fixing minimum wages and capping the weight of loads. But many porters were wearing inadequate clothing. Enforcing environmental codes is also needed, from sewage control to rubbish collection. If regulation could be tightened, the joys of trekking would be greater, as well as the euphoria at the top. Well, I've made it to the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. I'm at 5,895 metres above sea level. And it's just after daybreak. Dozens of others have also made it up to this highest point of Africa. Behind me, you can also see Mount Meru, another one of Tanzania's big mountains. But it's Mount Kilimanjaro that's the biggest, the so-called rooftop of Africa. The final push had been in darkness, but with the sun now up, we saw the full wonder of glaciers this close to the equator and the cloud base so far below. I had learned that climbing Kilimanjaro had been more than fulfilling dreams about mountaintops. It was all about the journey, trekking through the spectacular changing scenery, sleeping on the mountain, and sharing the experience with the Tanzanian crew, whose future depends on a collective responsibility to take care of this place.